Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This um, video is on the sum of difference of cubes, and this is about factoring. So, when we're factoring the sum or the difference of cubes, we're using these two equations. So, you can see here we have something cubed, and this something in this case happens to be x. So, something cubed added to something else cubed. And when we factor that, we end up with the first thing, which in this case is an x, added to the second variable, in this case the y. And then that's multiplied by the first variable squared. Notice the negative here. We have a positive here. So in, in this second bracket, the next um, sign is the negative, right? So x squared minus the two of them multiplied together, the, the x and the y, added to the y squared. And if we have the difference of cubed, so something cubed minus something cubed, it's virtually identical except that we are Notice here we have a plus and a plus. Here we have a minus and a minus. So x cubed minus y cubed, x minus y. And notice in the second bracket this negative, which was here, becomes a positive. So part of it is just being able to make sense of these two equations for yourself. Find a way to remember x cubed plus y cubed, first bracket, we have a positive, and these are not cubed. Second bracket, we have three terms, and we have a negative here. The other one, here we have the difference of cubes. The first one shows the first piece, or the first variable minus the second variable. And then, in this bracket, they're all positive. So find a way to remember how to do it. And that's only, of course, if your instructor is not giving you the equation. Now, let's take a look at the question. So for the first question here, we have to figure out what has been cubed. All right? So then, here, it's obvious. We have x cubed. And 64, and sometimes some of these numbers are hard to figure out, but we just pull out our calculator and put in some numbers. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. Okay, so this becomes x cubed plus 4 cubed, all right? So then we go back to our equation and say, all right, well, what am I going to do with that? I have something cubed added to something cubed. And I write it out this way. So then I say, all right, in this case, the first one that's cubed is the x. So then my x goes here. And the second thing that's cubed is my 4. So my 4 goes here. Then a second bracket. Now I see I want the first thing squared, so that's an x squared. Then I want a negative sign. Then I want these two multiplied together, or I should say the 4 and the x multiplied together. So it becomes minus 4 times x, and then added to the y squared. So the 4 is the y, and that is squared. So we end up with 4 squared, or 16. So this would be the factoring of x cubed plus 64, following this rule. Now, next question. 54a cubed minus 2. Well, we know 2 is not a perfect square, or a perfect cube, I should say. And 
54 is not either. But whenever we're looking at factoring, we're always looking for the, the common monomial first, or the common factor. So what is common to both of these? Well, it's a 2. So if I pull out a 2, I'm left with 27a cubed minus 1. And sometimes we can look at a 1 and say, well, I don't know, what's that? How is that a cube? Well, we know if we have 1 and we cube it, we end up with 1. So 1 is sort of a magical number in a way. It can be so many different things. So here we are. We definitely have something cubed there. So now we just need to rewrite it so we know what is cubed here. So again, 2 is out front. 27 is 3 cubed. So we have 3 times a cubed. Okay? Minus 1 cubed. All right? So there's the first thing that's cubed, the 3a, and the 1 is the second thing that's cubed. So then we go back to our rule and we have how am I going to put this here? Okay, so here's our rule. Alright, there's our rule. The two stays out front. So we have the first thing, which is the 3a minus the second, which is the 1, times the first piece squared. So we end up with 9a squared plus the 3a times the 1, which is 3a, added to the 1 squared which is 1. And this would be our answer for the second question. Okay. All right, another question. And if you want, you can pause the video and try the questions and then just start it up again and I'll walk through it. So again here we have to determine what's been cubed. When we have x to the power of 6, that's essentially x squared, and that is what's been cubed, okay? That's supposed to be a 2. 125 is 5 cubed, and obviously here we have a y that's cubed. So we have it added to 5y and that is cubed. All right, so then we go back to our rule again. This should have on a different piece of paper. Okay, we go back to our rule. We say, okay, so this is x, which is this piece, essentially. This is our x and this is our y. So we have x squared plus 5y times this thing squared. So x squared squared is x to the 4, right? So let's write it here. x squared squared is x to the 4. So then we have x to the 4, then minus, and we're minusing the x times the y, right? So here's our x and here's our y. So then that becomes 5x squared y. And then we add it to 
this final term, which is our y essentially, and that has to be squared. So that is 5y squared, which is 25y squared. So then our 25y squared goes here. And that would be our factors. And again, it's important to just walk slowly through these questions, figuring out what exactly is cubed here and what exactly is cubed here. Now, last question. Here, we have to determine what's cubed, and here we have to determine what's cubed. So 8 is 2 cubed, and Q, of course, is just Q. So we have 2 Q cubed added to, here we have q squared, which is cubed, divided by 6, because 6 cubed is 216. And this is cubed. So here's essentially our x, this is essentially our y from our formula, right? And we remember that the equation looks like this, okay? So then we say, all right, here it is. So I have my first piece, the 2q, added to my y, which is q squared, divided by 6. And then I multiply it by the first piece squared, which is 4q squared. Then I have a negative here, and then I multiply these two together. So I end up with 2, and of course when I'm multiplying, let's just talk about that. So we have 2q multiplied by q squared over 6. So that becomes 2q cubed over 6, which is q cubed over 3. Okay, so then this middle piece here becomes q cubed over 3. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. So we had 2q times q squared over 6. Just slow it down a little bit here. And then we're adding it to this piece, which is squared. So we end up with q to the fourth over 36. Now the final answer for this would be Final answer for this would be 2q plus q squared over 6 times 4q squared minus this, so the q cubed divided by 3 plus q to the fourth divided by 36. And that would be the final answer for this question, number, number four. Okay? So lots of thinking in these questions and being sure about being careful about how you set it up, but it's not that bad as long as you go slowly through the questions. Okay?
and that video has been brought to you by wise guys i hope you have a fun day factoring take care